Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome to MK Quilts. What I'm about to show you today is an instructional video for the use of leader grips and zippers. I want to walk you through how I have adapted both of these products for use in my studio. You're going to be able to purchase everything that I'm showing you today through my website and that's www.mkquilts.com. So let's start, I'm starting at the front of the machine, and let me just tell you what you're gonna receive when you order your zipper tabs. So you're gonna get a package from me, and what it's gonna include is two zipper tabs, one extra tab for your, for your backing, and then you're also gonna receive in this package, you're gonna receive two freestanding zippers, okay? We're gonna talk about these free standing zippers first. These are gonna be the half of the zipper that has the pull tab on it, okay? So if you think about a zipper, the zipper has two halves. What I'm about to walk you through is attaching half of this zipper to the leader that you already have on your frame. And then the other half of the zipper, I have already attached for you to these fabric tabs, okay? So that is the way that I've adapted these products. After I'm done showing you at the front of the machine, I'm gonna walk you around to the back of the machine and we're gonna actually talk about these blue dowel rods that are part of the leader grip system, okay? So let's just put that away for now. And we'll talk about that later, okay? We're gonna come down to the left end of the machine. I'm gonna have Paul follow me down here so that we can talk about the very first step that you're going to do is grab one of these zipper halves with the pull tab on it. And we're gonna attach that zipper to your front backing leader. Okay, before we get started, I wanna make sure that all of you have your leaders attached to your frame in the same manner. And that is having your leaders in the front here cascading towards the middle between the bars, okay? So that's step number one. Step number two is we're going to be dealing only with the leader that's attached to the front bar, okay? That is the leader that you're gonna attach your zipper pull tab to. All right, Paul, if you can come in a little bit closer. The reason why I'm leaving the leader attached right now is so that you can have a clear visual about what I want you to do. I want you to look down at your leader, okay? So I'm holding it with my left hand. I want you to look down at your leader and I want you to look down at the pull tab. Both of those items, okay, I'm saying the word down, right? I want your pull tab to be facing down. That is gonna go under the underside of your leader. And if you have a pin on you, which I don't right now, but just put a little pin in there to hold that in position so that we can take this to our sewing machine and sew it on. Okay, this next part, I'm gonna ask Paul to zoom in a little bit so that, again, you can have a clear visual of how you're gonna attach this at your domestic sewing machine. And I'm gonna turn around so that I'm oriented the way that you would be oriented when you're sitting at your sewing machine. Okay, you've, now you've had this pinned on, on here with the pull tab facing down. You've ripped your leader off of the Velcro and now you're sitting at your sewing machine and you're ready to sew this part of the zipper onto this underside of your leader at your domestic sewing machine. What you can do is choose a foot that's gonna allow you to get close to the zipper. I used a quarter inch foot that had a little lip on it. Some of your quarter inch feet might not be like that. You can also use a zipper foot. Whatever foot is gonna allow you to get close to the teeth of the zipper. And what I want you to do is allow just a little bit of space, okay? Maybe about an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch away from the teeth is where you should place the edge of your leader. Now, one thing, when you get started, this little pull is gonna be in your way when you start stitching. So just take the pull, pull it down a little bit so that it's out of your way and start stitching with a nice short stitch length whatever your default on your machine is fine, and start stitching that leader to the zipper. When you approach the tab, put your presser foot down, um, lift up on your presser foot actually, needle down, lift up on the presser foot, and you're gonna be able to just wiggle that pull tab back towards the front. Again, lower your, your presser foot and continue to 
to sew that zipper tab all the way down onto your leader and then you're going to come back over to the frame and you're going to put it on okay i'm back at the frame i have just completed what i explained to you about attaching the pull tab to the bottom of your leader now the whole point of that is so that you can use the zipper fabric tabs that I have already created for you. Now, I want to just back up a little bit. I told you at the beginning of this video that this was a follow-up video to my loading video on YouTube. I want to make sure that you go back and watch that video because there's a lot of instruction in there about how I load things that I do to get the backing straight and nice and level. What I'm showing you right now is just how to attach the zippers to the leaders. But it's important that you know that you should be always attaching these down at the left hand end of your frame when you're at the front side, okay? And just to show you that I do actually do this on a daily basis in my studio, the purpose of having the extra fabric tab in your order is so that you can get your next quilt that you're gonna work on prepared and attached while you already have a quilt on your frame. So just to prove the point, let me just show you. This is the quilt that I just took off my frame, okay? So I just finished this beautiful quilt. It's still attached to the little tabbed zipper, uh, fabric tab, right? I already have my next quilt is ready to go and with the extra tab that I have in my studio and that you now have in your set, you can already have your next backing attached to the tab, okay? So that is the benefit of having extra tabs. I have several in my studio. What you've gotten in your set is one for the bar for the quilt you're working on and one extra tab for the next quilt you're gonna load. All right, one little piece of advice about your fabric tabs that I've created for you. And remember, you've got two of them in your set. It's very important that when you're attaching these fabric tabs to your backing, that you get them on in the proper orientation. Because remember, your male part of the zipper is down here at the left hand end, which means when you go to sew this on, you need to make sure that the left end of it ends up down here. On my tabs in my studio, I've actually gone ahead and written on them. You might want to make a marker mark. Maybe you want to sew a little ribbon to indicate which is the side that you're going to sew to your backing. It's very important. You'll do it wrong a couple of times and then you'll never do it wrong again. All right, so what I usually do to make sure I'm in the right orientation is get my pull. My pull is already attached. I get my tabbed end down at the left. I stand in front of my backing and I'm going to put whatever method you have used to indicate that that's the side. That's the side that's going to go up and against the right side of your backing, which is facing down, right? Okay, so that's just an important part. Watch, th watch through that video again of mine, the loading video. Just one caveat with that. Anything that I mention about attaching the pull tabs and the zippers in that video kind of don't listen to that because I've already done that for you and there's a couple of inconsistencies in my video from how I was doing it then to how I'm doing it now okay so just know everything's pre-attached for you but that video has a lot of good techniques and tips in it for using the zippers in combination with the grips okay All right, I'm around to the back side of the machine now. Let's talk about attaching the zipper pull to the back side of the machine. Once again, you're gonna take that half of the zipper with the pull on it. You're gonna be facing the back of your frame. Now, I already have done this step on this um, leader, okay? So your leader, again, it's going to be blank back here, right? You're gonna take your pull, you're gonna face your, your leader, and once again, you're gonna put the pull tab facing down, okay? This time we're on the right-hand side of the machine as you're facing it from the back. So if you think about this, what you want to ultimately have is your pull tabs on the same end of your frame, front to back, okay? 
pull tab down, put it underneath your, your leader, go back to your domestic sewing machine, same thing. Keep a nice distance from the teeth, sew that zipper onto your leader, okay? That's what I've done here. All right, next step. You're gonna take your other fabric tab that I have created for you, and you're gonna know that this is the one for the back of the frame because the one in the back has a casing sewn into it. Okay, so I've already done that for you. You don't even have to do anything. Grab this one that has the casing sewn into it. It has the male part of the zipper already attached to it. Say thank you, MK. And you're gonna come over here and you're gonna put this tab uh, casing zipper on, attach it to the leader, okay? So I'm doing that. Just follow me, Paul, and we'll get this attached. And right now the machine is a little bit in the way. Normally I would have that down at the end, but because we're filming, I've got it kind of in the middle. All right. Okay, so you have both of the zippers now attached to your leaders. You have your tabs attached and we are ready to talk about the leader grips. All right, so the product that I'm using are the leader grips by Regina's Quilt Studio. And these are what I'm selling through MK Quilts. And I'm selling the sets that are for full float of your quilt top, okay? Just understand that when you get these from me, if you're thinking there's not enough leaders uh, or there's not enough dowels in the pack, I'm purposely selling you a pack that only has half of them because I only use the dowels on the back side of the frame, okay? So that's that, what you're gonna get in the package. Now inside of there, and I, again, I talk about this in my loading video, but just let me review. Inside of the packet are gonna be the dowel rods. Those are what slip inside of the casing that I have created for you. Whoops, sorry about that. All right, so they slip right in there. Now, one thing to remember, whether you have a 10 foot or a 12 foot frame, what you want these dowels to do is you want them to completely fill your casing, but not down to where the machine carriage is. So that is why on some of my dowels, I've just went ahead and, and chopped them off because I just wanted to fill the casing all the way up to the carriage of the machine. And if you get a combination of dowels that's just a little bit too long, it's okay to just cut it off. It works perfectly fine, okay? All right. Sold separately from the actual leader grips are uh, some of the accessories, and I just really quickly wanted to go through those with you. There are the side grips that you can also purchase. And these are the, so the grips that go along the side of your backing to give you a nice, consistent uh, tension on the sides of your quilt. Whether you have two or three clamps, it doesn't matter. I only use one clamp on my gallery frame with the side grip because it comes with this little ribbon and it works perfectly. Saves a lot of time when you're advancing. You only have to attach one clamp every advance rather than four or six. So that can save you a lot of time. And those side, those side um, clamps come in different sizes for the different uh, machines that we have. All right, the other thing that you can get, sometimes your combination of the dowels are just not exactly what you need in relation to the grips that go over the dowels. So you can also get um, some shorter ones, and these come in handy just if you have two of these and it's just not quite long enough, then you can just use one of these smaller, I think these are 12 inches, and it just works out perfectly. Um, and then for the back to the side grips, sometimes over time, your side grips, the, the actual plastic part is gonna get a little worn just from overusing, using over and over and over again. So you can just get the side uh, plastic part which means you don't have to buy the ribbon part over and over again. It's just the top part that gets worn out. Okay, so that's that. Now, the other thing, if you watch my YouTube video, there are some other accessories that come with the leader grips that I don't use. One of them, one of the pieces that I don't use is this little plastic uh, connector device. And if you read the instructions in the grips, it tells you to put this on 
your dowels before you insert it in the casing. Use a, a blow dryer to heat this so that it makes it one long dowel rod. I don't do that because I don't use the grips on every single quilt that I do. And if I have decided not to use the grips, I don't want to have to take a huge 12 foot length of this dowel out of my casing. I would rather just take out sections, put them on the side of my machine until I'm ready to use them again. So you can do that if you want, but I have not. The other thing that comes in there are these itty bitty little grips. Okay, and these come in handy if you're working on a king size quilt and you just need a couple of little places to hold your fabric in place while you attach the rest of the grips, you can use those. Okay, so those come with your set of leader grips, but I don't use the majority of these smaller items. I just use the dowels and the grips that go over the dowels and the side grips are, are the bomb, sorry. Okay, the side grips. I think Paul's gonna leave these bloopers in because he gets a kick out of that. Okay, so I really think I really think that that about explains it. I'm not gonna go into the rest of the loading because again, you can refer back to that YouTube video. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to reach out to me. You know the best way, Facebook private message. You can always email me. Melissa at mkquilts.com is the best email address to use for that. I hope that this system works as well for you as it does for me. Keeps things going really quickly in my studio, and you guys know I'm a pretty busy girl. All right, you guys, as my shirt says at the end of all of my videos, from my studio to yours, happy quilting. Bye-bye. I think we have a guest appearance at the end of the video. It's Samson. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. <laughs> hey, it's MK to you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Bye. Bye, you guys.